Okay, so today we will start in Sukhasana. And if you have a block or something sturdy that you can prop yourself up on, you can use that. Um, today will be a slow, stretchy flow, which apparently is going to be perfect timing for some. Um, I'm finding during the pandemic, I'm just sitting way more than I used to. So I'm finding I'm extremely tight and need lots of stretching. So that's what this flow will be for today. So if you have a block or something to sit up on, go ahead and kind of sit on the edge of it so that you can raise your hips up higher than your knees. Your knees can rest on the floor in a cross-legged position. And if you don't have something to sit on, that's okay. Just sit on your mat. And as always, you can rest your hands on your thighs, gently lower your eyelids. Find length through the spine, lifting through the crown of the head, just allowing a slight tilt of the pelvis, a little opening, finding the natural curvature in the spine here. Release some pressure in the low back. Relax your shoulders down and begin to start taking deep, slow breaths. Full inhales through the nose, feeling the air as it enters through the nostrils, filling the lungs, expanding through the ribs, expanding through the back of the heart and exhale, emptying everything. Starting to bring your attention to the present moment, to your body, finding that mind-body connection, letting go of anything else going on in your mind right now. So just allowing the next 30 minutes to be this moment, what you're doing. And then at the end of your next breath, you can keep your eyes closed or if you need to open them just to kind of see what I'm doing, we're going to do some wrist stretches here. Again, lots of computer desk work right now. So I just feel like everything needs some stretching. So we're going to bring our fingers intertwined. Your palms are apart. And then we're going to bring our wrists one on top of the other. So the left wrist is on top. You're finding a... Um, flexion in the left wrist and extension in the right. And just feel that gentle stretch here. And then exhale, your next inhale, switch. So now the right hand is on top, left is on the bottom. Finding flexion in the right and extension in the left. And then as you exhale, release, and then we'll bring our, um, keep your fingers intertwined, the palms are facing you, and then we'll do the same thing just in the lateral plane instead of the vertical. So rotating so that uh, left wrist is in front and flexed, right wrist is extended, breathe in, and then exhale, switch. And then you can keep the fingers intertwined, push the palms away from your body, and then gently extend to the arms, straighten the arms, breathe in as you bring your hands and the palms up towards the ceiling, relax the shoulders down. And then as you exhale, release the hands, slowly allow them to come behind the back, intertwine, bringing the palms together and then push the palm packet towards the floor, finding that stretch, lowering the shoulders, finding length. And then release, maybe shake out your hands, take the block out or whatever it is you're sitting on. And then we'll move into dolphin pose. 
So we'll bring our forearms down towards the mat in candlesticks or a number 11. The palms are flat, fingers are spread wide. Tuck your toes, lift the hips. Coming into a kind of like a downward facing dog. Your shoulders are stacked on top of your elbows. And then see if you can begin to walk your toes in towards the elbows. As you do this, you might find that your elbows start to splay out to the sides. Try to draw them in so that they stay in that candlestick formation. So just finding a stretch here, some strength and stretch in our shoulders here. Continue to breathe. Imagining that you're pushing your chest back towards your thighs. And you can stay here. Again, your shoulders are stacked on top of your elbows. You might begin to find that you're shaking, you're finding that muscle um, action here. If you want a little bit more, we'll do some dolphin push ups. So, straightening through the right hand, then straightening through the left, lowering the left, right forearm, lower the left forearm. Lift the right, lift the left, lower right lower left. One more time. Lift right, lift left, lower right, lower left. And then take it starting from the other side. So lifting the left forearm, right, lower left, lower right. Lift left, lift right, lower left, lower right. Last time, lift left, lift right, lower left, lower right. And you can drop down towards your knees, drop down into a child's pose if you want. Stretch it out here. And then tuck the toes, lift the hips, find your downward facing dog. From here, we'll find a calf stretch. So we'll start with our right leg. So we'll straighten through our right leg and then kind of come light up onto the left toes. Maybe you can take like a small step forward and just kind of lightly lower the toes on the left towards the ground and lower your right heel towards the ground. Keep pushing firmly through your hands, lifting your hips up high. So you should be feeling an opening through the back of the right leg. If your right heel doesn't come down towards the earth, it's okay. Just get it as close as you can. The more you push, gently pushing towards the floor with the right heel, the more stretch you'll find in the right calf. And then you can release and take it to the other side. So this time coming light on the right toes, maybe stepping forward just a bit and then pushing through left heel towards the mat. Keep sending the hips up high, finding length through the crown of the head towards the tailbone. And just gently trying to push the heel, left heel as close to the mat as you can get it, finding that stretch and that extra space through left leg. Keep breathing. And then go ahead and release, coming back to downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts for three legged dog. Exhale, step it forward right in the center of your mat between your hands, coming into a runner's lunge. From here, we'll come onto the blade edge, the outer edge of the right foot, kind of like in a lizard, so that your right knee drops towards the right side of your mat. You're staying on your fingertips, maybe using the blocks underneath your hands, and then just kind of find that opening by dropping left hip down, dropping right knee down. You can remain still here, or maybe kind of find a small bouncing motion, just extra, finding that extra space here. It's kind of like a lizard runner's lunge. One more breath in here. And then as you exhale, straighten, bringing the right foot back towards the earth. And then we'll take our left foot to cross behind the right. All right, so from here, we're gonna do something a little funky. 
So again, come onto the outer edges of both of your feet. Your feet are flexed. Coming onto the outer edges of both feet, bend through the knees, send the knees wide. And almost like in a chair here, you're gonna sink your hips down low, maybe reach your arms up. So you're balancing on the outer edges of your feet. You're finding some stretch through the glutes. Sink the seat down a little bit high, lower and reach your arms up a little bit higher. Breathe here. And then exhale, flatten through the feet, find a forward fold here, keep the legs crossed. Inhale. And exhale. So let's take our hands behind our back, clasp the hands, and then allow the hands to drop over the head. Maybe using a strap if it's hard to grasp your hands here. And just breathe here. Release the hands coming back into a fold. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. And exhale, fold. Inhale, coming back to the outer edges of your feet, coming into that funky chair again. Flex the toes, bend the knees, send the hips back, seat back, maybe lift the arms. Just one breath here, inhale. Exhale. Coming to flat feet, we'll plant through our right foot, lift left foot and knee up towards the chest and then cross left ankle over right knee, finding figure four. Option to bring hands to prayer in front of the heart, sinking the hips down low, bending through the knees, flexing the left foot, grounding through the right, or option to find eagle arms, left arm under, right arm over. Maybe clasping through the hands or just wrapping around and grabbing the shoulders. See if you can lift the elbows a little bit higher and sink the seat a little bit lower, pushing the forearms away from the body, finding space between the shoulder blades. One more breath in. Exhale, unwind the left foot, send it back, finding crescent lunge, eagle arms stay. Deep bend in the right knee on the toes of the left, Reach the forearms up a little bit higher. Breathe in here. Breathe out. A little bit of a shoulder stretch here. We'll take our hand packet and bring it over towards our right side. So finding a little stretch in the shoulders. As you're pulling the right arm towards the right side, Continue to pull through the left shoulder as well. Find a little bit more stretch here. And then you can release the hands, reach the arms up high. And we'll go through a chaturanga vinyasa here. Step the right leg back. Inhale, coming forward into high plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, step it towards the center of your mat between the hands. Come onto the outer edge of the left foot. So in that funky um, lizard runner's lunge. So drop the right hip down and allow the left knee to fall towards the left. Option to remain still or find a slight bounce. Opening up to the right hip flexor. Breathe in here. Breathe out. Flatten through left foot. And then we'll bring our right foot behind our left coming into that cross-legged forward fold. 
Come onto the outer edges of both feet, bend the knees, sit down into that funky chair. Find your balance, maybe lift the arms, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, straighten through the legs, forward fold, breathe out. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. One more time for one breath, funky chair. Find the outer edges of your feet, flex through the toes, bend the knees, send the seat back, lift the arms. Inhale, exhale. Straighten through the legs. This time we'll come into our figure four on the other side. Grounding through the left foot, lift right knee, cross it over the left ankle, or the left knee, excuse me. Sit down low, option to bring hands to heart prayer, or find your eagle arms, right arm under, right leg over. Breathe in here, lift the elbows, push the forearms away, sink down a little bit lower, finding some strength in the left quad. And then slowly, gracefully unwind, send the right leg back, finding crescent lunge. Eagle arms stay. Breathe in, lift the arms a little bit higher. Breathe out. Send the arm packet towards the left. Your body stays square towards the center. Just the arms are stretching over to the left. Breathe in here. Breathe out. Release the hands. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, find your chaturanga. Left foot steps back. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Walk your hands back towards your feet. Maybe heel toe the feet out, hips distance apart, finding ragdoll here. So finding a gentle bend in the knees, if that feels good, if you're tight. Allowing the head to drop, tailbone to lift higher. And just breathe here, maybe swaying side to side. Maybe allowing the hands to come up over the head, intertwined. Whatever feels good for you here, just release. We feel good to bend one knee at a time. Walk your hands back out, coming back to downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, step it between the hands at the center of the mat. And then we'll step our left foot forward just a little bit. We're gonna move into a pyramid pose from here. Okay, so you can stand up. You wanna make sure that the right foot is pointing forward on the right side of your mat. And your left foot is at a 45 degree angle on the left side of the mat. So you choose the distance between the legs. And then from here, we'll start to slowly hinge forward over the right leg, keeping a flat back. And maybe this is enough for you right here, feeling a stretch. I'm already feeling it just doing this with a flat back through the back of my right leg. So you can rest your hands on your quad here. You can use your blocks for a little bit of support to find that flat back, but you wanna keep the legs straight. If you feel like you can do more, you can bring your hands down and maybe frame the right foot and allow the torso to drape over the right thigh. You can allow the head to drop if you have a gentle bend in the knee, that's okay. 
We're going to be here for a little bit. So just take your time. Breathe. If you're straining, if you're shaking, you're doing too much. So use your blocks, use your supports to kind of protect your muscles, protect your joints. This should feel good, not painful. If you have more flexibility, you might be able to reach your hands back and clasp behind the left thigh. So you choose the option that feels best for you. Two more breaths. This feels extra yummy. Last breath. Beautiful. All right, switch the feet. Left foot, left foot forward, right foot back. Right foot's at a 45 degree angle. You choose the space between the legs and you can stand up. And again, starting slowly. So maybe just finding, hinging forward, hands on the hips, find that flat back. See if you can really almost like jut your chin forward to find that length. Rest your palms on your left thigh. If this feels good, stay here. If you want a little bit more, you know your options. So wherever you choose, make it somewhere that feels good, that feels safe, that you can sustain for a minute. No shame in using your blocks or supports. That's what they're there for. People think that blocks and straps are like they're copping out, that they're not good. It's actually usually better because you have better form with the supports. And the longer you stay in these poses, like yen-like, where you continue to breathe and just let the body fall where it falls over time, that's where your flexibility increases. Initially, your body is resisting, it's shaking, you're tensing somewhere else. But as you continue to breathe and hold it, you'll notice you move a little bit deeper into the pose. One more breath here. Plant the hands, step the left foot back, downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lift the right leg, inhale. Step it forward towards the top of the mat. And then we'll come down onto our knee actually. Draw the left knee in right behind the right. So you're on all fours with your legs crossed. This is the best way to set up for cow face pose. So when you're kind of in this like table type position, it's easier to stack the knees one on top of the other. And then from here, see if you can spread your feet out wide to the edges of your mat and then sit down. So moving in, let me turn this way. So for cow face pose, if you're super tight, you'll find it a little bit easier or gentler if you draw the heels in towards your hips. So this is a great, great way to be. If you have more flexibility or you wanna challenge yourself, you draw your heels away from your hips. See if you can keep your knees stacked, find the length through the spine, try to ground down through the right hip. So if it's lifting up way off the mat, you're doing too much. And then from here, we'll plant our right hand down, inhale, lift the left arm up, and then exhale, find a side bend. Try not to kind of collapse in, see if you can open the chest, spin the chest open to the ceiling. Reach through the crown of the head and the fingertips. Exhale. 
And then come back up to center. Gently start to crawl the fingertips forward, folding. You choose the depth of this fold. So maybe this is enough right here, keeping that um, length through your spine. Maybe you have enough flexibility to fold all the way forward to bring the forearms towards the mat. Maybe you have enough flexibility to use your block again. And maybe um, like for me, for example, I would put it on the highest setting and then I can rest my forehead on the block and then rest my forearms down. Again, notice if right hip is creeping up, what can you do to change to keep the integrity of the pose? Two breaths here. One breath. Gently coming up, switch out your feet. Find cow face on the other side. Again, maybe coming onto all fours to stack the knees and then sit back. Left hand plants, inhale, right arm up. Exhale, side, bend to the left. Breathe in. Find that space to the whole right side of the body. Breathe out, coming back to center. And again, finding your depth for your fold. Using your blocks or your supports if you need them. And just let it all go here. Try not to have any muscle activity. Release. Inhale, slowly draw the fingertips back towards the body, finding length. Uncross your legs, maybe extend them long, shake them out. Bring back the circulation if you lost any there. And then we'll move into a bound angle pose from here, supine. So drawing the heels together, the knees out wide. You can begin to find your way onto your backs. Supta Baddha Konasana or supine bound angle. Allow the knees to fall open. Arms along the sides of the body, palms facing up, maybe eyes closed. If you feel any tension here, you can allow your blocks or pillows or towels underneath your knees to provide a little bit of support. And just let it all fall open here. option to stay here in Supta Baddha Konasana if you prefer for our final resting pose or if there's another pose corpse whatever you would like to use to close out your practice making your way there Allowing everything to release, to melt into the earth. Breath is natural. Imagine the muscles melting from the bones. Bones settling into your mat. Just 
skin melting to the mat. Shavasana. You're welcome to stay in Shavasana as long as you would like or as you're able. Thank you for practicing with me today. Have a good weekend. Namaste.